guys and welcome back to another session of a has lecture series uh, now today uh, i will be discussing about competitive antagonism a important concept in clinical pharmacology uh, the reason being when we practice polypharmacy that is when we give two or more drugs to a individual these drugs um, have the ability to block the action of the other drug okay so uh, it might have a profound impact on the outcome of um, the treatment so we need to know something on antagonism so uh, a part of that is competitive antagonism so i'll be dealing with that but if even before we go to competitive antagonism let's discuss uh, something on receptor antagonism so uh, you know there are receptors uh, and through the receptors uh, drugs act it's one of the ways in which drugs act so it's like a lock and a key is like a drug so it fits into the lock and opens the lock and then the entire process of tr uh, signal transduction occurs inside the cell for the effect to occur so receptors are so important but anyway we will be dealing with receptors and so on in the sessions to come so not to go into those details now uh, so when we talk of antagonism we talk in terms of receptors uh, here okay so because there are other types of antagonism also but we just talk of receptor antagonism at this moment and you should know that it's a very selective process okay it's not something which generalizes a specific receptor a specific drug and then interactions between these drugs and the receptor and the entire process of antagonism is brought about anyway uh, now just to recap antagonism is something uh, to relate to antagonist antagonist is a drug which has the affinity that is the love for the receptor but doesn't have the intrinsic ability to produce a impact so it's 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 not capable em enough to activate the receptor uh, for the effects to arise but it has all the affinity so it will bind to the receptor but it won't uh, produce any effect so in short in short so that is what is an antagonist so from the word antagonist comes the word antagonism so we are dealing with receptor antagonism so we have two types of receptor antagonism we have the competitive antagonism and we have the non competitive antagonism we will be discussing about competitive antagonism as of now okay so here is a picture of a monkey who is walking on two legs okay but before we even go to that we just try to discuss something else okay now go back to school days okay school days uh, you know uh, long back you know i'd been in school but i always give this example because it, it has so much of meaning to the word competition okay so split the term competitive and the other thing is antagonism so we have seen what antagonism means and now see what that word competitive means to us okay so remember those school days when uh, everybody in the class uh, had a dream to you know excel in academics and to be the first uh, you know to achieve the first rank okay and now think of the two boys okay uh, okay who are extremely studious who are highly academically oriented uh, and both of them want to excel in academics and to that they have a common goal Okay, that's important. They have a common goal of achieving the first rank in the class. So, for competition to exist, you should have a common goal. Okay, it cannot be like a person who is wants to excel in sports is competing with a person who wants to excel in academics. It cannot happen. A common goal should be there. The common end point should be there. So, to, so for the competition to arise. So, for competitive antagonism even, the word competition is for a common site of the receptor. Remember, there has to be a common site. There has to be one site between these two drugs to get attached. Then we call it as a competition. Who will succeed? Who will be the number one? Who will be the number two? That, that's the best way of describing competitive antagonism but remember always uh, in life you know situations change you know dramatic it's not that the person who is uh, the number one will remain as number one uh, throughout his academic career it can happen like the other guy will study more 
and has the full ability to get to the number one. So that's why I have shown this picture here of a monkey. Now it's not about this monkey here. It's about these two legs here. Okay. Now I always go on Facebook and there are always those motivational kind of, you know, what I should say, uh, quotes and so on. So they talk of uh, so much on life uh, sequences, uh, life theories, life philosophies and so on. So something on that, you know, you think in terms of these two legs here. Um, uh, so you know this leg is in the front that's in the that's at the back but always there's there's no comp uh, I should say you know uh, things change over a period of time okay so the next sequence will be like you know at this point the the, the left leg is in the front and uh, it's this is at the back but you know the next sequence is going to be that this the leg which is at the back is going to come in the front and which is in the front is going to go back so there's always that life sequence okay so even with these two boys there's going to be a sequence if the other boy has the full capacity studies more concentrates more that's important the word concentrates more he has the full chance to go and hit the first rank and the person who is now securing a first rank may go back to the second rank so dramatical situations um, uh, situation change over a period of time so so in a competition it is not something which is irreversible always in a competition uh, there has to be a change in a person getting up to the first rank so know these things because these relate we want to extrapolate this example of this legs of the school boys to what deals with competitive antagonism now here is a now this I have taken it from the internet because it shows something uh, very much true about competitive antagonism. So here is a receptor and you know he is a drug or a natural ligand. It can be hormone, neurotransmitter or drug, whatever it might be. It fits into the receptors and then transformational change occurs within the receptor and what you get is the signal transduction and the signal whatever the things have to happen as uh, at the second the cascade reactions occur so that that's a normal process of how things occur now coming back to this uh, antagonist picture now as i said two boys same seat same side same goal now we have the natural ligand here where is my arrow? okay this is natural ligand here and you know it's shown in the orange color and then you have the blue uh, ones which is the competitive antagonist so both these uh, substances have affinity they have the love they will fight with each other to fit into this receptor okay so common goal to go and hit the receptor affinity is there between both these substances and the receptor so they will fight with each other to secure that place onto the receptor so common goal competition between the two substances what usually occurs is that competitive antagonist might have a higher affinity slightly more affinity and it and it takes um, it, it, its way and fits into the receptor but it doesn't have the intrinsic ability don't remember it doesn't have the intrinsic ability to cause um, transformational change within the receptor and to activate a signal so that's important it has the affinity so it will go forward bind to the receptor but it won't have the intrinsic ability to uh, send out a signal through the receptor so that's what is called as a competitive antagonism okay so two substances a lot of affinity for the receptors but competitive antagonism is the one in which the antagonist will take the charge go and hit the receptor but won't activate the receptor that's very important when you talk of competitive antagonist but do you think this this condition is going to remain the same for life once fitted into this receptor it's never going to come out no it cannot happen in that way if you increase if you increase in this scenario if you increase the number of molecules of agonist or the drug then this drug will displace the competitive antagonist from its site and take up its original site of action onto the receptor so always competitive antagonist is a reversible process depends upon the concentration of the agonist and the antagonist more the antagonist 
more would be the competitive antagonist action more the agonist lesser would be the competitive antagonist action whatever might be the condition whatever might be the condition again i am repeating it's a reversible process over a period of time this molecule of antagonist is going to uh, you know uh, go back and leave the site open for the agonist to occur so these kind of competitive antagonism is what you see generally in uh, uh, you know clinical practice as far as drugs uh, and therapeutics is concerned so try to remember one goal two substances same same affinity but with competitive antagonist no intrinsic ability to produce the effect it's a reversible condition so go back to school days and just remember that example so that it becomes so easy now coming back to very mathematical how you want to quantify antagonism as far as competitive antagonism is concerned now here you see a drc that is a dose response curve of agonist alone and that's good now you know about it if you are new to my channel go back and hit my uh, lecture on uh, dose response curve to get full knowledge of that and then you have a drc which is of agonist the same agonist plus you have added a competitive antagonist to it now what has happened is a rightward shift a rightward parallel shift of the drc now why that should occur the reason why this drc should uh, you know try to move to the right okay with a competitive antagonism the reason being now as i said competitive antagonism is a reversible process so it depends upon the concentration of the agonist and the antagonist now if you increase the dose of a agonist if you increase the dose of a agonist okay you can achieve the same response because more the agonist it will try to displace the antagonist from its side from its side we discussed it earlier in the lecture and will take up its natural uh, site of action on the receptor and the entire cascade will move on so more amount of drug remember more amount of drug will be required to bring about a similar effect same effect same efficacy effect more amount of drug will be required with a competitive antagonist so what you see is that the potency of a drug potency of a drug since you are using more amount of drug now the potency of a drug will be reduced but the efficacy can still be achieved by increasing the by increasing the dose of a drug okay so efficacy the maximal amount of uh, effect which can be seen with the drug can still be achieved but you need to increase the dose because you are still giving it with a competitive antagonist so you need to displace that first with the volumes of agonist fit into the receptor and that's the reason that you get a right toward a shift so potency will be affected potency will become less for a agonist but efficacy wise there won't be any change there would be a parallel right toward shift of the agonist if you are trying to give with a competitive antagonist so that's very important that's the that's the summary of the entire competitive antagonism of how you quantify these things again I try to relate it to my earlier two slides so that it becomes very much easy for you to know the best example of competitive antagonism would be morphine and naloxen now remember these are few things that you need to know in summary are they bind they, you are talking of two substances agonist and antagonist which are binding to same site drc will shift to the right side we discussed it it's a reversible process depends upon concentration of agonist and antagonist it's commonly seen with drugs now in addition to this uh, which is not there in this slide is also that which i remember now is is about non equilibrium uh, competitive antagonism non equilibrium competitive antagonism it's it's something uh, non equilibrium competitive antagonism is that the right thing i said yes competitive antagonism okay so in this it, it, it's something which is rare to see but you find it especially if the antagonist molecule fits on to the receptor for a very long time okay so it won't move out of the receptor but it won't show any effect also so it will behave as a transient non competitive antagonist uh, like thing but overall it's a competitive antagonist over a period of time but it might be a long time the molecule of antagonist will dissociate from the receptor site but the time period will be very much uh, you know time period will be long uh, 
especially with the antagonist putting on to the receptor. So, it will behave as a temporary non competitive antagonist uh, phenomena. Any day, anyway, rare to see, but just remember that there is a type subtype to competitive antagonism, it is called as non equilibrium uh, competitive uh, antagonism, where the receptor. Uh, fits onto the uh, where the drug fits onto the receptor for a, for a very long time and so behaves as if it is a uh, what you can say irreversible or non competitive antagonist but for a temporary movement so that is what is all about competitive antagonism so that was my take for the day i hope you like this session please do subscribe to my channel your subscriptions do matter to me if I need to move on and teach you more on. Yeah.